Welcome to my channel. I am Mind Blown Chef. Why? Because I'm going to blow your mind with my simple step-by-step -step recipes. Sit back and get your mind blown. That's right, guys. We've added more light for your viewing pleasure. In this video, chicken and dumplings. Now, watch this. You think you've seen chicken and dumplings? No, you haven't. Not like this. Best chicken and dumplings ever. For ingredients, I got a nice pile of chicken legs here, right? We got cheesecloth and some cooking twine. I'm going to show you what's up with that. We got a bay leaf. We have flour, peppercorn, garlic clove, parsley. We're only going to use the stem. We have two onions, carrots, celery to make our mirepoix. Then we have some biscuits, just get regular buttermilk biscuits. We're going to use about four cans of those, I'm going to make a big pot. And then I have cream right here. Let's get started. So let's build our sachet first. What is a sachet? Sachet is a piece of cheesecloth with herbs wrapped inside of it. Now, the reason why you want to get a cheesecloth and wrap up all the herbs is so your soup, stock, or sauce doesn't have those herbs floating around in it. But you can still get all the flavor from it. Ah, very smart. So. We have parsley, bay leaf, garlic clove, and then the peppercorn in here. We're gonna roll it up. We're gonna twist. And then we're gonna tie it off with our cooking twine, and voila, we have a sachet. For our mirepoix, basically what we're gonna do is large dice on everything. So, peel the carrot, and then we're gonna do a dice about this size, right here. Onions, same thing. Large dice, right there, about like that, right? Celery, same thing, leave it like that, come at it like this. Large dice, that's it. So get a big stock pot, put a little bit of olive oil on the bottom, get it warmed up. Okay, first step, drop in your mirror pot, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna sweat that down. You don't need this pan real hot, just gonna get some sweating action going on, add some salt. When the onion starts to turn translucent, we'll go to the next step. Okay, so we sweat these down, so it's kinda like, hello, hello, anybody home? Come on out, because all the flavor gets released when you sweat it down. So we wanna bring out all that flavor. And once your onions have become almost translucent, go ahead, add in all of your chicken legs. Then, you're gonna add in a lot of water, depending on how big your pot is. Mine's huge. Now, very exciting news, guys. Go ahead, pat yourself on the back, because you just made a homemade chicken stock. So our chicken's in. We're going to go ahead and cook that for 45 minutes. Now, check out this next step, because this is the difference between my chicken and dumplings and everyone else's. So add your sachet in. Now. Get a bowl and get a ladle or some kind of device, a spoon, because we're gonna have to depoulage this chicken stock, AKA de poo poo, because there's gonna be a lot of scum that comes to the surface, and I will show you that. Now, here's the big difference between mine and everyone else's chicken and dumplings. I'm making the chicken stock from scratch, right? We're gonna take the meat off of the chicken legs in about 45 minutes. So you're gonna let this cook for 45 minutes. You're gonna remove the meat from the chicken legs and you're gonna let it continually cook for another couple hours. So you're sitting there asking yourself, why is it gonna take the meat off? The reason why we're gonna take the meat off in 45 minutes is because you don't wanna overcook the meat. You just wanna cook it enough to get it off the bone. Now, in order to pull all that collagen, that nice flavor from the bone, you have to let it cook for a few hours. That's why we take the meat off stock comes up to a boil, go ahead, lower it down to a low temperature. All we're going to do is simmer it and see all that? That's what I was talking about. This is all scum. So what you do is you take your ladle or your spoon and you're not trying to get too much liquid. You just want to get all that off of there. And as you're cooking this, you're going to come back and recheck and you're going to skim it off again. Probably four times. So after 45 minutes, we're going to remove the chicken and we're gonna take the meat off and then we're gonna put the bones back into the stock. Now, once the bones are back into the broth and your meat is in a bowl, make sure you wrap up the bowl with your meat because your meat will dry out. So, keep it wrapped up and we're gonna just set that aside, save it for later. 
So let your chicken stock roll for another hour. Now traditionally chicken stock's four to six hours, but I'm just gonna let this cook for a total of about two hours, because I just wanna get some of the flavor, but I'm, we're not actually making a stock. But if this was actually going to be used as a stock, you wanna cook it for four to six hours. That way you get all the gelatin from the bones out. Gelatin basically makes your stock real gelatinous. All right, so we got two more minutes on the stock pot. So now what you gotta do, get your biscuits out, right? Here's what I do with the biscuits. Take a little piece, pinch it off, throw it in the flour. Pinch, throw it in the flour. Pinch, throw in the flour. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna make sure that these are all nice, really, really coated with flour. Set them to the side, and then we're gonna drop them in the pot over there. Remove your sachet and all your chicken bones once your timer goes off. Once you have all your dough pinched and rolled in the flour, go ahead, we're going back to the stock pot now. Add your chicken back to the stock pot, the chicken meat. Our bones and the sachet have been removed. Now our meat's in there. Now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna add our dough to the pot. Now this flour that's on there is going to help thicken this sauce up. So add all your dough in. Now, have a fork handy. Do not move the dough around when you first set it in. What we're gonna do is let it kinda cook and then you're gonna take the fork and you're gonna kinda just push down like that. That's all. All right, so once your dough's been cooking for about five minutes, take your fork and you can just kinda push down on top. You do not wanna mix. Just push down and that's gonna help separate all the dough from each other. The reason why you don't wanna mix it is it become one big glob. So you wanna keep the dumplings separated. So you just keep pushing down like this with your fork and you'll see that it's slowly starting to separate. Then you're gonna go ahead and cook this for 20 minutes. Let the dough completely cook. Let that flour taste get completely cooked out of there. About 20 to 30 minutes. After 20 minutes, Go ahead, that's what it should look like. Go ahead, add your cream, and we're gonna let this go for another 10 minutes. We're basically just gonna let the cream incorporate itself into the uh, uh, chicken dumplings. Go ahead, taste. If you need to add a little more salt, a little pepper, whatever it is, balance it out to your liking. Bam! There it is, homemade chicken and dumplings. Takes a little while, but in order to be this nice and sexy, it's gonna take some time.